Welcome to our journey on reflecting with an open heart on delicate issues. And this is video number, uh, video 11. And if you have not watched all the other 10 videos, this is a series that builds upon itself. So you'd be a little lost. You won't really be jumping in with the right footing if you jump in here. So I encourage you to please go back to video one and watch all the 10 videos in order before coming to this video. Now, if you're on video 11 here and you're sticking with me, uh, I wanna talk about a subject matter that might be delicate and difficult for me to do. Uh, and actually it's one that's intriguing to me because this series has been about race and really those who could speak best to it would be African-Americans, which I am certainly not. And so it's intriguing that I'm doing a series on racial relations while not being the one who has the most experience with it. Uh, some that helps me a little bit is being a parent to biracial children, uh, being a pastor of a, a more diverse church uh, that helps, but I'm still not, I'm not black. And this video is specifically geared more to you who's watching this if you are African-American or black in general. Uh, if you're white, you can watch this video and you might gain some insights, but this is uh, probably more a, a reflection for those of you who are African-American. And you may have noticed that the first 10 videos are actually focused on convincing those who are white of the reality of these issues and the issues that are within them. And so I might have made some statements in the first 10 videos that you might think, well, yeah, duh, I know that, or yeah, I understand that, or um, different reflections like that. And just know, if I didn't say it in the other videos, that again, primarily I was trying to communicate to white people about this issue. Uh, but now I want to talk with you uh, who are African-American and, and I want you to know that uh, I'm only offering suggestions uh, on ideas on how we might be able to bring correction to this issue and I am not saying that what you're doing is wrong and again I am not saying that I fully understand this issue and would love if you have insights to give me or questions or even corrections, I would love for you to either put those in the comments or to message me on Facebook or to email me at dlevec at bethelpgh.org and would love to grow. And maybe that those would be things that would help produce future uh, videos. Uh, but I think there is a need for uh, understanding in all areas. Uh, I'm involved in various groups because of adoption and fostering. And in these groups, we have moments where we're hearing from adult adoptees, where we're hearing from uh, birth parents who lost their children uh, because they gave up their children or because their rights were terminated. Uh, and the more you hear, the more you realize, wow, there is such a need for us as human beings to understand what other people are going through, what their experiences are. And it really, really helps with communication. Uh, again, part of the reason why the first 10 videos are more geared towards uh, those that are white, to help white people better understand the issues from uh, what a black person is going through. And same for a black person, if we're going to, uh, if, if, if African Americans are gonna help the white community to transform the change, uh, then there's a need to understand them. However, that's kind of, and we'll get to this in the future, that's kind of an interesting thought because it is easier for a black person to understand a white person than, by, than the other way around. And the reason is because uh, white culture and thinking gets more exposure. Uh, and so that's easy to get to, but we're, we're gonna touch on it nonetheless. Again, that's why more of the videos are on helping white people understand a black uh, side, uh, and we're only doing one on helping someone who's black understanding a white side. So uh, when we are communicating about this issue, some things to keep in mind is that our goal should be to have an impact and not just make a declaration. 
And again, that disclaimer, not saying that uh, everyone is doing that, just, just saying that uh, if I'm going to convince someone who is white that this is an issue, then I need to think, what's going to convince a white person that this is an issue? And I need to get in the head of a, a white person in order to persuade them to accept, one, that the issue exists, and, and two, uh, the different dynamics of that issue. Now, that being said, that doesn't mean that we don't need to get uh, scrappy at times or uh, assertive or to protest. Uh, I think that there are certainly times to draw a line in the sand and say you're not crossing here and to uh, generate some resistance, but there needs to be a balance in that. I need to be able to discern, and that's, again, probably a tricky part of this issue, is it's a national public issue and so it's hard to really, but the problem is, is every individual has their own set of viewpoints and issues with it. And to really convince people, it's going to be most effective as we move along one person at a time uh, persuading people. And, and that's kind of hard to do in a public forum in the way this has been draw, dragged in there. But uh, if I'm communicating with someone, I want to discern is this person that needs some assertiveness and, and some pushiness uh, on my part? Or is this person that needs me to be a little more calm in the way that I communicate uh, what's happening here? And that's actually, <laughs> um, if you're white and you're watching this, you're going to, if you're really open to thinking about this, you're going to find out how sensitive we are and, and how almost... Uh, uh, like we need to be handled with kid gloves, uh, like we're very fragile, uh, but it's true. And us as uh, white folk need to understand that, and, and African Americans need to understand that, that uh, as white, we're just a little over oversensitive about it. And you might say, well, I've noticed this person is not sensitive with other issues, and, and they're okay with getting loud and aggressive. Um, however, because this issue is touchy, most white people want it to be communicated in a calm, thought out, logical, unemotional way. Is that fair? Nope, not fair. Is that the way that it is for most people? Yes, it is. Um, and so if you're white, just think about uh, black people being put out and in a bad situation and mistreated and, and at times in fear for their lives uh, and have reason to be mad and here we are uh, not dealing with those issues and telling them just relax just calm down you're making me uncomfortable uh, really <laughs> really is uh, not really kind caring but nonetheless again if we're going to convince white individuals uh, that this is an issue and about the issue, uh, we're going to have to, for most people, again, there's a time and place to be assertive and loud, but, uh, and some, I don't know what it is, uh, but again, just white society, just typically, especially specific issues, likes a calm conversation. So keep that in mind uh, when you're talking with whites, uh, they're sensitive. <laughs> uh, do they just, <laughs> again, I, I, sometimes I can't even believe the things that I'm saying. Uh, again, is it right for the, them to be sensitive to the people who are being mistreated? No. <laughs> uh, but my goal on my end, and hopefully your goal on your end, is to persuade them. So if I know they're sensitive, then I'm going to deal with their sensitivities, even if they're not fair and not right and completely out of balance. Uh, so keep that in mind when trying to be uh, persuasive, uh, maybe beat around the bush a little bit, uh, and, and again, just be delicate in the way you deal with them. Uh, learn to present an effective argument. So in your conversations, learn the rebuttals, learn the criticisms and what people are saying back at this issue and learn how to answer this. This video series hopefully is a help to that. There are plenty of other much more knowledgeable resources than this. Uh, get your hands on them and learn how to communicate, get statistics, get the data, get the history, get the information, and learn how to be persuasive. Learn what, learn what changes people's minds. And as you learn what convinced one individual, take it to another and keep testing things out and learn how to present an effective argument. Uh, don't go for the kill. 
but ease into it. You may have noticed that's been the philosophy of this video series, is don't jump to things that people will reject right away without even listening to you. Go to the things that they might listen to you on first, and then work on easing into other things. Like the first video, I likely did not mention uh, Black Lives Matter. Uh, nor did I mention some other issues that I'm going to address later that I'm not mentioning here yet just for the sake of uh, uh, working up to that. But just be mindful that there are certain key words that close people's minds. So don't go there yet. Just kind of maneuver around. Again, don't go for the kill, but ease people into it. Do they deserve to <laughs> for you to go for the kill? Yes. Uh, but again, our goal isn't really... Uh, getting the point across as far as saying what we want to say, our goal is to convince them that this is an issue and that they need to do something about it. Uh, gently provide materials and resources. Uh, this video series, among other things, uh, find resources and share them with other people. Uh, but do it politely. Do it politely. Again, just remember that they're sensitive. And I'm saying this because I am white. I can say that. We're sensitive. Again, not fair, but just the reality. Uh, understand that most people do not realize their problem or the problem. Most people who are white that you're talking to, uh, any white person who is, does have a prejudice or is racist, they don't know it. Most people who are racist don't know that they are. And mo most white people don't know that there is a race problem. And if they do, they don't really know the depths of it or why it's a problem, how big it is of a problem. Uh, they just don't know. And, and so knowing that uh, is key in communicating uh, things. Uh, make concessions where possible. So if um, rioters are doing things that are not lawful and not good to do, uh, make those concessions. If there is black on black crime, if there is uh, absent fathers in the family, uh, if that is a reality, then make those concessions but gently pull them back to, but that is a different issue. This uh, racial injustice thing, racial uh, inequity is also an issue. Uh, if you deny things that are reality, and not saying those things are, but if they are, if you deny things that are reality, then instantly you're gonna get a closed mind from the other person because they're not gonna believe you anymore. So have to acknowledge, even if you have to kind of, uh, yeah, but, kind of thing, uh, that's fine. But just make sure that you're not denying things that are reality or just give an explanation of, well, I've heard a different side of that. Uh, but don't ever, if you recognize, if you recognize that something is true coming from the other person, don't ever re reject that truth uh, because we don't want to lose footing. We want to be convincing. This is how this is going to be changed is if we learn, when I say we, just humanity as a whole, if we learn how to be effective in communicating. Uh, this is a major uphill climb. The majority is white. So the majority viewpoint is white. And, <laughs> um, and it's slanted, uh, misrepresented uh, as far as uh, the black community is misrepresented to the white. And there's a lot of not believes, there's a lot of arguments and this is a major uphill climb and we have to know that, uh, otherwise we're gonna give up. But I think we can get up to the hill, we just have to know that we're dealing with uh, an uphill battle here. Uh, try not to contribute to the poor view. So if there are stereotypes towards African Americans that are African Americans are this way and it's a, it's a bad thing, then try to make sure that you're not contributing to it. One day I might, I'm going to do probably a video on putting the shoe on the other foot. And us as Christians, uh, we have felt slanted or slighted in different ways, particularly by the media, but in many ways. And we know that there's a viewpoint on Christians that's not true. And so we take, we uh, carry the mantle of disproving those stereotypes. Same with the African American community. There are stereotypes and uh, an African-American has the best ability to disprove that stereotype by their, their lifestyle. Uh, so just know that, uh, like a Christian, if we're viewed as judgmental and then we behave judgmentally, we've uh, set us back majorly. And same, same with anybody who is uh, being slighted. 
Uh, remember, uh, remember to use questions to guide people. Try to get them thinking. Try to get them to come to the conclusion themselves. Don't just lecture them, but ask them reflective, like we've been doing in this series, uh, reflective heart questions to get them to actually honestly think about it. And it's these questions, God used questioning throughout scripture. It's these questions that will help people actually come to the realization uh, that they have an issue, that there is an issue, and, and what can be done about it. Uh, avoid chasing people's distractions. If people go down rabbit trails and start trying to get you to argue about things that really aren't going to be a, a resolution to this issue, then give some kind of short answer to it and immediately move back to the focal point. A lot of times people, whether they know it or not, they're trying to avoid the subject matter like we've said in previous videos. And just acknowledge that. If you see that you're not gonna get anywhere because their comfort level, then move on. But if you see that you might be getting somewhere, then bring them back to that. I remember having a conversation with someone that I made a valid point regarding this race issue and they tried to point the attention to a bunch of other things. And I brought them back to that. And eventually they said, why do you keep bringing up that issue? And, and it, I said, it's because you haven't given me an answer to it. So make sure you keep driving a point home and, and sticking with, you need to have, we need to have a lot of focus to convince them. Uh, uh, don't see all resistance. I know this is video is maybe a little longer than others, but don't see all uh, resistance as permanent resistance. So you might have someone who refuses to believe an aspect of racial uh, equity. Don't give up on that person. Don't ever give up on the person. Uh, just keep praying for them. Just keep looking for opportunities and just keep providing them resources. And because an initial front resistance does not mean you haven't gotten to them. Uh, sometimes it's fear. Sometimes it's uncertainty. Uh, sometimes it's a knee-jerk reaction because it's uh, their hardwired viewpoints at the moment. So don't give up if someone gives you an initial resistance. Uh, you might be surprised where you might be able to take them. Uh, lastly, uh, ask white people to help the cause. Uh, this is an unfortunate thing, but I think it should be known as a reality if you've walked with me far enough in this series that unfortunately white people are going to believe it most when it's coming from white people that just uh, affirms or confirms the reality that whites are prejudiced against blacks and against their viewpoint uh, they're going to view it they're going to be open-minded to discuss it more if it's coming from a white person some of it is political correctness and being afraid to talk about that subject matter with someone who is black. Uh, they might be more open to conversation with someone who's white. Is that my fault if I'm black? No. Uh, it's just kind of the reality. And I think the more white voices we get speaking up against those who are slighted, I think the more we're going to get somewhere and tip that almost like a... Uh, a seesaw. Uh, we're going to tip that and tip the scales and move it to the other direction. So uh, please help me. I hope that that, if you are black, I hope that that uh, made, I hope that was right what I said. Uh, if it wasn't, just let me know. Again, I have an open heart here. Uh, but let's, let's uh, as white and as black, let's keep trying to be convincing about this and persuade more and more hearts uh, to be on the right page with this issue. So again, this series, I'm not asking for heavy promotion, but if you, if you would like it, comment, share on it, that would help make it more visible. Please, please comment on it or Facebook message me or email me with any uh, ideas, suggestions, comments, or questions. I would love to interact with you on, on growing this issue. Uh, and then if you have somebody you know that you think this series might get to them, they might be open to it, then sh send them the link to the, the, the playlist or send them the first video and get them onto the video series. And uh, hopefully we can reach more hearts uh, for Jesus uh, to be pure uh, towards all people of all colors. God bless.